Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I gotta give a shout out to those who subscribe to my channel after watching my welcome video. Thank you, thank you guys for supporting my channel um, and just subscribing, liking, commenting. I really appreciate those who shared my video on my social media platforms. Thanks so much guys. So I did a poll on my social media and I just asked what questions y'all have for me. So today that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna answer some of those questions for y'all. So the first question I got was, what are your 2020 goals? And I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I did not really make New Year's resolutions. So like the past two or three years, I really sat down, like reflected on the year and made goals. And this year I did reflect, but I didn't really like make new goals or resolutions for this year. So I had to think about this question. And honestly, my goals for this year is just to like reconcile with myself um, just get back to doing a lot of things that I enjoy and staying true to myself since a little bit over, well, about a year and a half ago, like I gave my life to Jesus and I was like this whole worldly person before I gave my life to Jesus. And then like, I gave my life to God and I was like, all right, you know? And so I had like a new identity. I was made new in Christ. And I think this year, what I want to focus on is really like figuring out what that looks like. Like, what does Shelby as a Christian really look like? What is that? Um, how, how does that look? And I think for me, like you see so many different Christians and it's like, well, which one is ones you strive to be? And it's like, you really should just, you should strive to be yourself and be who God has made you to be. And so I'm going to focus on that this year and figuring out who is this like wonderful woman that God has created me to be like what who is she like I want to know all about her so I'm spending a lot of time this year with God and just like exploring that and like trying new things and things that I've always wanted to do or things that I used to love doing that I like just stopped doing um so those are my 2020 goals so the next question I got was what inspired my career in early childhood education so y'all this was not in the plans like I grew up um, in the restaurant business and just a ton of just like entrepreneurship and just people like really like taking ownership over their lives. So I always thought that like I would follow suit. Um, but growing up, I was always obsessed with kids, like love to babysit or like love to like be around my baby cousins, which I didn't have a lot of baby cousins because I'm one of the youngest. Both of my parents are practically the babies and they have a lot of siblings and so a lot of my cousins are older than me and then I'm the youngest well I was the youngest in my family um so I was just always like into young children being around them and I just thought that was like whatever like I just thought that was like just like something that I enjoyed and then I went to college I started out I started out as a business major and that was cool like I really do love business but for you know I have to take like electives and stuff so I think it's like my freshman year I maybe took like a marriage and family roles class which is part of the child family studies major at UT and I like aced that class I did really well on the test love the information um and so I ended up taking like another elective in child family studies I think the next one was like family communication also loved it and so I don't know like somewhere in my sophomore year I remember it was at the very end of fall semester, sophomore year. I just kind of like woke up one day and was like, I'm switching my major to like early child education. Like I want to explore that. And I, I had always had this dream of being like, like opening up my own school. So not like a daycare where you're just like babysitting kids, but more of like an early learning center type of school. So like the kids are still learning, but it's like only for, for young children, like babies to maybe like pre-K age. Um, and so I was like, well, it makes sense if I want to open up my own school to um, to learn about education, right? Okay, so like that's how I ended up switching my major. Um, and then I just completely like fell in love with all of like my classes and I did really well in them and I ended up becoming a teacher and so we'll see about the whole opening up a school thing you never know what's in God's plans but right now this is where this is where we're at <laughs> okay so the next question I got was 
If money was no object, what would you do all day? Love questions like these because <laughs> I love to like daydream and just fantasize, right? So if money was no object, um, I probably would own like apartment buildings in different cities and I would do like income based. So I would probably drop them like in the hood or like close to just like lower income areas um and i would make them income based so people would still have to pay but it would just be more aligned with like what's affordable to them um and then i also used to like really have this idea for like teen moms um i really wanted to like find like an apartment building and like there would be like maybe like a daycare inside the apartment building where people come and work there and so like the moms could drop their kids off there and go to work go to school and they would still have to pay bills but it would also be like income based or we kind of like would work with them to teach them responsibility but also um still like supporting them along the way and it would also be like maybe for moms that are like homeless or teenagers that maybe got kicked out whatever um i had this dream back when i was in high school and so I would love to do that or like partner up with um, someone that maybe like wants to open up a community center. So if I had no money all day, I would for sure like do a bunch of, I think of like nonprofit things. I probably would open up a couple of schools and once again, put them in um, lower income areas, but they would be like really, really quality and great schools. So it would have like licensed teachers um, and they would be paid really well. But then I would also it would be like nature play based. And so if any of anyone's watching is ever into, if any of y'all are teachers out there, one of a really cool philosophy and teaching theory is um, Reggio Emilia. And pretty much it's just like embedding nature into play and children are building upon their own learning and this idea that children come into, um, they, they come to school with these like prior backgrounds and information and experiences and you're kind of building off of that and the teacher is facilitating the learning and the child is basically crafting up their own learning. Um, I learned about this when I was in school and I've just always been just amazed with it and fascinated and just really allowing the child to be themselves and you are just kind of like supporting and facilitating the environment and the materials and resources around that. So if I take, if money was no object, I would for sure open up some schools, put around some like apartment complexes in different cities, and I probably would travel abroad. I might even like live abroad for maybe like three months or something like that. Um, so that's probably what I would do if I if money was no object. Big dreamer. Um, the next question I got was. We're, like what is my relationship style so I wasn't quite sure what they meant by this question I probably should have asked for clarification but I didn't so what's your relationship style and how is it manifesting in your life so I kind of took this question as um maybe like my love language so my love languages I had two that were tied and it's physical touch and quality time so practically you know if you're holding my hand you know if you are give me a high five, you know, put an arm around the shoulder, that is really showing me that you like love and care for me and quality time is pretty much, you know, uninterrupted. You're focused on me. You're not looking at your phone. That's like my love language. So, so the next part of the question was, and then how is this manifesting in your life? Honestly, I'm just letting God do his thing up there. I'm like, he will let me know when I have met my husband or he's gonna let my husband know. My husband's, you know, gonna do the appropriate things to court me. Um, I'm not really worried about it. When the time is right, the time will be right. In the past, I feel like I've been like super aggressive with relationships and I had no problem like taking control in the reins and like approaching guys and um kind of like I guess like making the first step but now I just kind of realize like in my opinion if that really is a man's place um and so I've learned to become okay with like taking a, the taking that like just kind of 
waiting position and waiting for God to speak and the Lord will give me a sense of peace and he'll, you know, put me in connection when I'm ready to date and be ready to be someone's wife and he'll align those things up for me. I have no doubt in my mind about my God doing that. All right. So the last question I got was, where do you see yourself in 10 years? So this is also really hard for me, which is kind of crazy because I'm a big planner typically. Um, and so I've already mentioned, you know, and I'll share more about how I got saved and that, what that process and stuff looked like for me. But um, in another video, not in this video, that'd be way too long. But I, once I got saved, I really um, became okay with like God just kind of like doing his thing. And I used to be a really big planner. And I had like five year goals, 10 year goals, 15 year goals. And I, I for sure still have goals, but I feel like when you're in your twenties, it's like every six months, like you're in a different position or a different place. And so I kind of just like, I'm not really about to plan for any big things. Like, Lord, just do your thing. Let me know what you want me to do and I'll do it. Like, and so I feel like I'm still kind of in that position now. Um, and I'm just kind of like letting God do his thing. I think ideally in 10 years, I would, obviously I'll be 35. So I would like to be married. Hopefully I've had like two or three kids, maybe two, maybe three. We'll see if the Lord is willing. Um, I would for sure like to be settled in my career by then and just have a better firm place about, you know, God's purpose for my life and what that looks like and what he wants me to do and um hopefully I've opened a business maybe two and I don't know I, I honestly when it comes to like my dreams and my goals a lot of it is like I just want to be content and I want to be at peace with my life with who I am um and so it's really hard to think about like those dreams because I'm like mine are really simple. <laughs> but I do hope to be like a homeowner and just a lot more financially secure and also like more financially savvy, if that makes sense. Like I just want to understand a little bit more about like money and finances. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And where I see myself in 10 years, it's crazy to think that far. I mean, 10 years ago, I was 15. You know, and a lot has happened in that 10 years. All right, y'all, that's it. That's all the questions I received. Thank you to you guys for asking me questions. I was honestly expecting like sillier questions. Y'all asked like a really, not really deep, but like really thought provoking questions. So thanks guys. Hey y'all, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to like, comment below your thoughts on the video, content you like to see. And also don't forget to subscribe so that you'll know when I post the next video. Stay tuned and keep an eye on my social media so you know when I'm posting my next video. Bye.